Hopefully you're convinced that shear stresses can be a problem in your beam and uh, that you're going to be aware to make the calculations uh, to check if the beams will fail due to these shear stresses. Uh, one application where we see shear stresses really come into play is anytime we build up a cross section. So if we take multiple different shapes and we somehow link them together. So if you're doing like a built up steel section, you need to check the connection where maybe you're like welding the pieces together uh, to make sure you have enough welds to hold that in shear. Another common example is in wood um, application. So a lot of times we make uh, beams out of wood by nailing multiple pieces of wood together. So in this example, we're gonna take a look at one of those applications for a wooden box beam. Uh, so we'll see how to do the calculations and how to check the maximum shear stress uh, in the member. So let's look at example one. So in example one, we have a wooden box beam that's constructed from two two by 10 boards in the verticals and then there's two two by fours connecting them in the horizontal direction. Uh, it's gonna be pine wood and we'll take the maximum shear stress of that pine wood to be six megapascals. We're asked to find the maximum force V that can be applied to the cross section. So of course we're going to use the shear stress formula tau equals VQ over IT. Now the question says the maximum allowable shear stress is six megapascals. So that's going to be tau. So tau is our max shear stress. Well, how do we maximize shear stress? Well, I think we, if we maximize the numerator, so if we found the maximum shear and the maximum Q that was possible, that would give us the largest value of shear stress. And then, of course, we can minimize the denominators. When we talk about the max shear, the max shear is just going to be whatever the max shear that we get from our shear diagram is. So this is the maximum shear force that's in the cross section. So when we think about beams, we think about, we draw our shear diagram. This is the max shear. Q max, now Q changes throughout the cross section, but Q max will occur at the neutral axis. So we use Q to solve for the center of gravity, and we know that the neutral axis passes through the center of gravity. So this Q has the maximum value when it reaches the neutral axis. And so when we consider Q, we'll be considering really just one side of the cross section from the neutral axis. So I like to think we're going to start from the top and work our way down to the neutral axis, and then we'll stop in our calculation of Q. For the denominator, I, I is always the moment of inertia about the neutral axis, and I is for the total shape. So I is a cross-sectional property for this box beam. So there's really no changing I. I remains one value. T is the total thickness at our point of interest, so that'll be at the neutral axis in this particular problem. So we're just going to go through the variables here. Tau max was 6 megapascals. This was given to us in the problem statement. V max is what we're asked to solve for, so uh, there's no real solving for it quite yet. Q max, we said Q max will be at the neutral axis. So what is Q? Q is the integral over the area of Y dA, or the summation of Y bar A, if we can break up the cross section into discrete shapes of areas that are easy to calculate. So breaking up the cross section, we're going to look, and I'm just going to learn by example here. Uh, so I've drawn in one of the colors here in blue. So I'm going to take Q. Now I need to take all of the area of the box beam above the neutral axis or below the neutral axis. Um, they will be equal in terms of their values for Q. So I see that I can break this up into rectangles and um, dividing it into the blue rectangle and then we have the orange rectangle. And then we have another rectangle on the right, uh, but we see that that rectangle on the right is going to have the same geometry and uh, the same distances away from the neutral axis as the one on the left. So I'm going to make that one a blue rectangle as well. All 
All right, so I'll call the blue area shape one, and I'll call the orange area shape two. And when we do our calculations, we have to keep in mind that we have two shape ones. So when we're calculating Q, I think we're going to calculate Q for area one, but multiply it by two because we have two of them. And then we're going to add to that Q for area two. So we'll get into the calculations here. So we have to do y bar times a. So for the blue area, we need to determine what y bar is. Now y bar is the distance from the neutral axis to the center of gravity of the blue shaded area. For this beam, that distance is going to be 235 millimeters divided by 2. That gives us the total height of the top part of the cross section. And then divide that by 2 again. So 235 divided by 4, which is 58.75 millimeters. So that becomes our value for Y bar for the blue shaded area. I also need to calculate A for the blue shaded area. So this is a little bit easier. Um, we know that the total height of the blue rectangle is 235 millimeters divided by 2, and so that is 117.5 millimeters. And we also know that the width is given to us as 38 millimeters. So this becomes the area for shape 1. I put that into brackets and I multiply it by 2 because we have two blue rectangles. So the rectangle on the right will have the same quantity as the rectangle on the left. Now we look at the orange rectangle. The orange rectangle, the center of gravity, is uh, situated right there. So to figure out y bar, uh, well, I know that it's a distance of 117.5 millimeters from the neutral axis to the top of the cross section. And I know that center of gravity is halfway down, or half of 38 millimeters, so that's a distance of 19 millimeters. So 117.5 millimeters minus 19 millimeters is going to give me my distance y bar for shape 2. The area of shape 2 is more straightforward. It is 89 millimeters wide by 38 millimeters tall. And so now I've completed my calculation for Q. I just have to plug those numbers into my calculator. And we solve that Q max, which is at the neutral axis, is equal to 857,764.5 millimeters cubed. Next, we need to take into account the moment of inertia. Now, the moment of inertia will use the entire cross-section of the box beam. Okay, we always use the entire cross-section. And we always use the moment of inertia about the neutral axis because beams in the elastic region will bend about their neutral axis. So moment of inertia, we know, is 1 12th bh cubed for a rectangular shape. So if I look at the above shape, it's almost for the box beam, I have two rectangles. I have an outer rectangle that I outline there in magenta. And then I have an inner rectangle, the hole, that I've outlined in green. So to find the moment of inertia for the entire shape, I could take the moment of inertia for the pink rectangle and subtract out the moment of inertia for the green rectangle. So that's going to be 1 12th bh cubed for the uh, magenta rectangle minus 1 12th bh cubed for the green rectangle. And so now I plug in my numbers. So for the magenta rectangle, it's 1 12th the base is going to be the entire width of the beam 
which is 165 millimeters times the height, which is 235 millimeters cubed, minus the green rectangle, so that's going to be a minus 1 twelfth. The base of the green rectangle is 89 millimeters, and the height of the green rectangle is 159 millimeters cubed. All right, so I run these numbers in through my calculator, and I get that the moment of inertia for this shape is 148.633 times 10 to the 6th millimeters to the 4th. Now, I often get the question, why do we use the entire shape for a moment of inertia but not for Q? Well, you, we want the max value for Q. Um, because moment of inertia is the second moment of the area, there's a y squared a term in there. So when we go below the neutral axis, y squared remains positive. But for Q, y becomes negative. So if we included the bottom portion of the cross section, everything above that we did in our y bar a calculation would then be subtracted by a negative y bar a. And so Q would go back to zero. But moment of inertia, because it's the integral over the area of y squared dA, does not have that issue. Finally, we need T, which is the thickness at the point of interest. The point of interest is at the neutral axis, so we do the total thickness, which is 38 millimeters plus 38 millimeters, or 76 millimeters. We have everything we need now to solve for the max shear that this box beam can handle, so we just plug in the numbers that we determined above. Uh, 6 megapascals is 6 newtons per millimeter squared, so I want to make sure all my units work out, and so everything is in millimeters right now, so I need to make sure my left-hand side is in millimeters. I plug in the values for Q, for I, and for T. And then we'll solve for the max shear. Because everything's in millimeters, the max shear will come out in a units of newtons. Putting this in our calculators, we get that the max shear is 79,016 newtons, or 79.016 kilonewtons. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this example. Hopefully you're learning a little bit about shear stresses, and I uh, will see you next time.